Hello, today I will be talking about frontal fibrosing alopecia. What is the clinical course, how to diagnose it, what is the prognosis, and what are the options for treatment. Frontal fibrosing alopecia is characterized by the regression of the frontal hairline. Typically, the regression is approximately 1 mm per month, but it can be significantly less, and I have seen patients in whom it was significantly more. So this is an average speed. Despite the fact that usually the frontal hairline is affected and despite the name frontal fibrosing alopecia there may be also hair loss in the temporal area in some patients also the occipital area may be affected and this is an early phase as published by Mello and co-workers and this is the more advanced phase of the disease Frontal fibrosis alopecia is a disease of women, mainly of women in the peri or postmenopausal age, and men are really very rarely affected. In most cases, we can make the diagnosis on the basis of clinical appearance. The basis for the diagnosis is the regression of the frontal hairline, and sometimes you may see some hairs in the original hairline, and this is the so-called pseudo-fringe sign. Another typical sign of the disease is the so-called lonely hair and a lonely hair is a thick usually dark hair which is surrounded by fibrotic tissue and then a third typical feature of the disease is the loss of eyebrows it usually starts from the lateral side and it will progress towards the mid part of the face however if the patient presents only with loss of eyebrows then we need to perform a wide differential diagnosis because there are many causes of loss of eyebrows and frontal fibrosing alopecia is just one one of them. There are several typical trichoscopy features of frontal fibrosing alopecia. I will mention the three most important of them. First is the presence of the so-called lonely hair. This is the same as we see it with naked eye, but here we can see it more precisely. This is the presence of dark, thick hairs which are surrounded by the fibrotic tissue. The second typical feature is the so-called perifollicular scaling, but it is much milder compared to typical lichen planar pilaris. And third, and probably most importantly, it is the absence of vellus hair. Here in the whole field of view, you'll see no vellus hairs. This is the frontal hairline. And in the frontal hairline, there are only thick, dark, in most cases, thick, dark hairs. So just on the basis of the presence or absence of vellus hairs, you can differentiate these two diseases. A quite typical but not so very widely known feature of frontal fibrosing alopecia is the presence of the so-called pili torti. These are hairs which are twisted around its own axis and they are not very well identifiable with the handheld dermoscope. But also here you will see some waving within the hair shaft. Frontal fibrosing alopecia may also affect the eye eyebrows and there is one trichoscopy feature which may be helpful in the differential diagnosis. This is the trichoscopy image of the eyebrow area in a person with frontal fibrosing alopecia. And please take a look, there is a decreased number of eyebrows, but most importantly, every eyebrow is growing in a different direction. And this has been identified as a hint for frontal fibrosing alopecia, and some of us call it the signpost sign. Now coming back to the hairline, if we want to take a biopsy for differential diagnosis at the frontal hairline, then we usually choose an area with several hairs with perifollicular scaling because it is believed to reflect the ongoing inflammatory process. Treatment is the most difficult part of this presentation because there are no clear guidelines. There are some treatments which may be used in frontal fibrosing alopecia. These treatments can be divided into two groups. One of them is dutasteride and finasteride. These are 5 alpha reductase inhibitors. They work via reducing the effect of testosterone or to be more precise, dihydrotestosterone on the hair follicle. And a second group is the group of drugs which have an anti-inflammatory or immunosuppressive activity. And they include corticosteroids which may be applied either topically or intralesionally or systemically and also other types of treatments such as isotretinoin, cyclosporin, doxycycline, or the anti-malaria drugs. 
and the decision about the treatment depends on the doctor and on the patient so there is no clear guideline which treatment we should start with this is a patient who was not responding to other types of treatment she received methotrexate and she achieved stabilization of the frontal hairline within seven months does it mean that we can recommend methotrexate for frontal fibrosing alopecia well definitely not because there are now not more than 10 cases published in the literature this is not sufficient to draw conclusions however in patients who do not respond to other types of treatment methotrexate may be a treatment option jet inhibitors are a new group of drugs which are being developed for many diseases including diseases in dermatology however can they be of value in frontal fibrosing alopecia well we don't know there are some cases which have been published with some success with some jet inhibitors however definitely it's too early to predict the value of jet inhibitors in clinical practice for patients with frontal fibrosing alopecia with this thanks a lot for watching if you like this video please consider subscribing to my youtube channel if you already subscribed thanks a lot and i hope to see you during my next video see you